It wasn't Apple that made Steve Jobs a billionaire, it was Pixar. Judging by the comments on my recent video on the history of Inside Out, a lot of people didn't know that Steve Jobs was one of the co-founders of Pixar. And so here's how Jobs became a billionaire. Basically, Pixar exists as its own company because George Lucas was going through a divorce. George Lucas met his first wife, film editor Marsha Griffin, in 1967, when the two of them were working at the U.S. Information Agency. They got married in 1969, and then six years later, as part of the production of Star Wars, Lucas would create Industrial Light and Magic, a special effects company on the cutting edge of filmmaking. And because ILM was always innovating, in 1980, Lucas hired two computer graphics specialists. Alvy Ray Smith and Ed Catmull. For years, the two developed computer technology and conducted early CGI tests at ILM. They called it the Computer Division, and its big breakthrough came in 1982 when they animated the Genesis sequence in Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan. Disney animator and future Pixar creative chief John Lasseter would later join them at ILM. Meanwhile, George Lucas was wearing himself out making three Star Wars movies in the span of six years. And the stress of all that put a serious strain on his relationship, resulting in he and Marsha getting a divorce in 1983. Marsha, by the way, won an Oscar in 1977 for editing Star Wars. Anyway, Lucas reportedly needed some cash to pay for his divorce, so he put the entire computer division up for sale, with an asking price of $30 million. Steve Jobs offered $5 million, but no deal. Lucas then tried to sell half of it to Disney for $15 million, but Jeffrey Katzenberg said no. Philips Electronics and GM then united for a bid, which was shepherded by Ross Perot of all people, but it fell through at the last minute. And so Steve Jobs, who had left Apple in 1985, came back around increasing his offer to $10 million. And George Lucas took the deal. Jobs got all of the hardware from the computer division and 40 employees, including Smith, Catmull, and Lasseter. And so the four of them founded this new company and named at Pixar, based on the same name that they had given their revolutionary graphics computer. Steve Jobs then became the CEO and majority shareholder of Pixar. For nine years, the company made commercials and it sold hardware and software, but was constantly losing money, and Jobs considered selling Pixar many times. During this era, Pixar, which was still an independent company, made a deal to make three computer-generated feature films in partnership with Disney, starting with the first of its kind, Toy Story. When Steve Jobs heard from critics that Toy Story would be a hit, and that it would be getting a Thanksgiving season release from Disney, he held off on selling the company, and then Pixar went public in November of 1995 to coincide with the release of Toy Story. And the stock was an immediate success. Pixar ended its first day of trading on the stock market at $39 a share. And this is what made Steve Jobs a billionaire. According to Cult of Mac, he reportedly called his friend, Google co-founder Larry Page, and told him, I made it. According to financial news outlet Benzinga, Jobs' success at Pixar restored his reputation and gave him the confidence to rejoin Apple in 1997 as CEO. Pixar then made movies in partnership with Disney for 20 years, but it was still its own company until 2006 when Disney acquired Pixar for $7.4 billion in an all stock deal, which then made Steve Jobs Disney's largest individual shareholder with 7%, which was equal to $3.9 billion. And he also got a seat on Disney's board of directors. Disney CEO Bob Iger reportedly came to the decision to buy Pixar when he was watching a Hong Kong Disneyland parade and saw that most of the characters in the parade were Pixar creations, not Disney. 